Hello everyone and welcome back to If My Heart Had Some Wings, baby. In the last one, ooh, 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 ooh. we got it in with my girl Amane. Senpai, please me. Well, I was just going to say please, but you know, whatever. Anyways, hell yeah, dude. We got it in. Um, and the story continues. I hope we get it in a few more times before the game is over. I mean, if the Katori playthrough, read through, walk through, run through, uh, it was any indicator, then you know more sexiness should be on the horizon. But regardless of that, we got to figure out what how the, the story differs, right? What are you talking about? We're not focused on the lewd stuff. That's the, that's not. Anyway, it's Iska talking now, so let's get back to the story, shall we? Uh, pretty much, this is a flashback that happened right after the sex scene from last episode, pretty much. I think it was right after. I think, yeah, they talked a little bit after the sex scene, and then this happened, so. Anyway, let's go. Oh, that's right. But it won't feel as great as something else you'll do another, some other day with some other dude. そうだろうと。きっと怖いだけだ。うん。嘘関係しなければね。だって、イガラシ君がいるもん。本当に。彼すごいよね。あんな難しいこと軽々やっちゃうんだもん。and he's handsome. Maybe we should run a train on him. <笑>よよ。また焼き餅すか違う。私はそれに設計図書いてくれるんでしょ。この子よりもっとすごいグライダーの。うん。そのつもりだ。この機体はよくできているが、細部まで見つめられてはいない。おそらく海外の有名なグライダーを参考にしたのだろうが、昨日折り返
Who that? Who's this helper? Get this helper out of here. Since early this morning, several men in white lab coats were bringing packages to Flying Fish Manor. Tell them to get out of here. That's my girl. Oh, she's living here now? Hell yeah, more opportunities for... things. As they heard the commotion, Katori and Hat peeked out from their room. Apparently, those are tools Amane Senpai needs for her work. The other day when I discovered that Senpai was living in the school garage, I forced her to come and stay at the Flying Fish Manor. And after that, she officially moved in. Hell yeah. She's not a Kifu Academy student, but she will be working as a lecturer, so commuting to work from here will be convenient. We had vacant rooms anyway and got permission from the owner. Then Senpai called the lab in good spirits and got them to deliver the tools she needed for work, but... Demo... I know, right? Yeah. Even the duck thought so. There were several computers. I'm not even sure if those were normal PCs or not. A blueprint printer, and that's a 3D scanner, right? Plenty of other equipment and tools with unknown purposes were being carried in as well. The room was turned to a research lab. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> a man who was much older than Senpai frantically bowed his head and looked deeply troubled. Damn, put him in the place, Amane. Put him in the place! When I saw her brushing off an adult man like that, it really showed just how incredible she is. Yep, they do. Lab coat. Lab coat up. While Senpai was moving in, we were preparing breakfast as usual. I guess we'll have to start making one, no, one and a half extra portions from now on, because you know how Amane likes to eat. Amane will be eating about that much. Really, though. I'll have to teach her my ways. Tori was grinning as she made that mean remark. Apparently she was overjoyed now that Senpai was living with us again. Maybe. I can help set her straight. It's so reassuring that even a duck agrees with that. So reassuring. So hungry! Amane tottered into the dining hall. Breakfast will be done soon. How's moving in coming along? She sat down, clearly exhausted. Katori, could you bring everyone some cold tea? Katori put the tray with barley tea on her knees and headed with hat towards the entrance hall. I put a glass of barley tea in front of Senpai. Here you go. Here you are, Senpai. Senpai? Oh, she hugged me? Nice. What? Suddenly she stood up and hugged me. She held my head against her chest and squeezed it tightly. Nice. Wait, Senpai! I bet you have. She muttered with joy coming from the bottom of her heart. When I heard that, I couldn't pull myself away from her. Katori's gonna come back soon. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. That PDA, though. Boing, boing, boing! Ah, her poops are so soft, bro! Apparently she was wearing a bra today, but even so, the softness was amazing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Stage 5 Clinger! We'll be together forever! Uh-oh. Yes. Huh? 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 <laughs> Katori, who came right after her hat, said that. It seems like got away in time, so she hasn't noticed anything. Th thank you. 
I'm so glad Hat came back first. <laughs> Senpai replied happily to the delighted Katori and then patted her on the head. Uh, Senpai has two defenseless after all. And she was supposed to reflect on this and be more careful. Yeah, be more careful, senpai. And how much longer is this part of the story gonna be, I wonder? Anyway, hey, Mabo. Masatsugu and Hitaru came to help and the remodeling of the aircraft was going very smoothly. However, Hitaru aside, it's quite unexpected that Matsatsugu came to help too. <laughs> huh? Oh, you haven't heard about my girlfriend? Let me tell you, bruh. Hitaru discreetly pointed to the other side of the garage. She's working on smoothness of joints, if you know what I'm saying. Senpai was in the midst of work right now. She was staring at the computer screen and muttering something to herself, unaware that we were gossiping about her. Yeah, that's her. Hitaru and Masatsugu both knew Amane Senpai, but apparently they never thought that she was my girlfriend. Well, I guess it is a little unexpected. Damn right. Hey, don't hate on the older woman. Hell yeah. Apparently Masatsuka broke up with the girlfriend that he used to brag about. He said it was because their taste in music didn't match, but I don't quite get what he meant. <laughs> Masatsugu was muttering and complaining, but he kept working. All in all, he's a good friend. Even if he likes to call me an asshole. Also, whoa! Could you not do that when I'm, like, sitting this close to the screen? Yeah, I'm a little too close to the screen right now. I need to probably sit back a little bit. Let me get a little more comfortable position here. Okay, that's probably better. Sometimes when I'm playing these games with the mouse, I start sitting forward, and I'm like, shit, man, I need to sit back. Stop sitting forward. Anyway, we had plenty of help so I could focus on the simulator. Handling seems to be more difficult than before the improvements. Or rather, the tendencies it had are more pronounced now. That's only natural considering it's an aircraft designed for the very specific purpose of reaching the morning glory. It's a glider that Amane Senpai had designed and everyone is making. And I will be piloting it. I'll get to do the best part. I can't afford to fail. We can't let it come within our grasp and then let it slip away right before our eyes like it did last year. When I thought about that, bitter memories from back then disrupted my concentration. I don't have enough training. As I muttered that and looked ahead, I saw Senpai. I thought she was working, but instead she took the framed picture that had been standing on the desk and was looking at it. I walked up from behind and looked at the photo with her. Those are amazing clouds. I can understand why Iska-san longed for them. Her reply was somewhat unclear. Huh? When I looked at this picture, I had a strange thought. Uh, well... I just thought if the cloud we saw last year really was the morning glory... When you look at, this, at it like this, doesn't it look completely different? The magnificent cloud that was captured on this small photo. I'm sure that the sight beyond what this picture covered was even more spectacular. In comparison, the clouds we saw last year were certainly beautiful, but... Maybe I'm thinking too hard about this. Okay, so I get where they're going with this. They haven't actually decided that this year there's going to be an even bigger and better and more proper morning glory. They still haven't discovered that yet. In the previous uh, path with Katori, Amane is the one that discovered it and made us work toward you know, getting done because we were expecting the actual morning glory the whole time. But at this point, they haven't actually figured that out yet. And it looks like Aoi is going to help push to figure that out right now. Anyway. Maybe it's just a difference in size, or perhaps this picture was just taken very well. In any case, clouds like these are not common. Sorry, I said something weird. I apologize and went back to the simulator. 
Senpai was looking at the photograph for a while. Our summer vacation passed in the blink of an eye. Before I knew it, the Oban Festival was already coming up. And one day... One day... Damn, the glider looking good, though. The main wings were there, still unpainted, but otherwise finished. Hell yeah. Senpai examined every nook and cranny of the newly assembled main wings. Hell yeah, flawlessly. She made a slightly troubled face. Katori seemed disappointed. We were very excited and wanted her to rejoice too. I also felt like that. It was faint, but her eyes certainly sparkled a little. When we saw that, Katori's and everyone's eyes also glittered. There you go. Now we're talking! That's the encouragement they wanted to hear. When Agatha heard that, she walked towards the wall of our workplace. She's got everyone's attention. On that wall was our work schedule. Everyone looked at a few points that were corrected with a red pen. Woot! Yep! As our cheers resounded, Agatha added new corrections to the schedule. Sweet! Four days early! Of course, those four days were thanks to Masatsuga and Hitaru's help, but Agatha and Katori were also doing their best, and Asachan and Yorichan have gotten used to the work. Everyone was completely focused on building the glider every day, as if they were throwing away their precious summer vacation. Hell yeah, dude, that means everything gets pushed up in schedule, kick ass. Really? You mean right after the Obon Festival? Agatha nodded vigorously. Oh, we're gonna run into issues, but that's okay. So what are we going to do until then? I don't know. I can think of a couple things. Mostly one thing, though. There was a loud chorus of joy from everyone. So I'll finally be able to... My voice bled excitement as I whispered to myself. It's been one year since we were kicked out of this garage. And now we finally will be able to fly in the skies over Kazagara. Oh yeah. While everyone else was jumping for joy, Amana Senpai appeared lost in thought. Is something wrong, Senpai? Mm. Oh god. What do you want, or what do you need, or what are you feeling? Everyone quieted down and looked at Senpai. Oh, I know what's on her mind. She's thinking about the morning glory thing we just talked about. So she's probably going to hypothesize that shit right now. Here we go. What was it? Ah, it was just a passing thought, so I'd already forgotten about it. Of course she did, see? I knew it. All we had to do was spark it in her brain and she probably went, oh, that could be a thing. 
The Monet went to her seat and turned the computer monitor so that everyone could see. On the screen there was a photo we took during our fight last year, lined up side by side with a scan of the photo taken by the previous members. Asachan and Yurochan were at the Windmill Hill that day and saw those clouds. It was such an impressive spectacle, they must have remembered it right after looking at the photo. Nobody knew what Amane Senpai could be talking about, so they listened in silence. Not fully formed. I looked closely at the photos lined up in the screen on the screen. The scale was indeed different, or rather it seemed that the cloud we saw last year was in the process of forming a morning glory. That's what Amane Senpai said when she refused to be our supervisor. There you go. That's the one. That's the thing everyone wanted to hear. Senpai's words were enveloped by the noisy chatter that erupted in the garage. Senpai nodded. Got all that historical data. Senpai displayed that data on the monitor. Okay, that should say cloud, but I got you. Yurochan gave a simple explanation for those of us who couldn't follow along and started looking over the weather data that Senpai showed. The rest of us wouldn't get it even if we looked at the data, but this girl might be able to grasp it. Exactly. The fake morning glory is the sign of the real one, just one year later. Senpai shook her head. When Senpai declared this so clearly, it took our breaths away. To us, that hypothesis sounded more like a vague prophecy. But we had a good enough basis to trust in the prophecy like hypothesis. We believe. That's right, because if nothing else, this is something Amane Senpai said, and she knows everything. Sounds good to me. それで十分よ。そうです。先輩にそう言っていただけただけで私が頑張れるんですから。いい話聞かせてもらっちゃいました。よし。もう一踏ん張りするわよ。ほんと単純ね。俺らも最後まで付き合うか。さあ。
うだね。青兄たちが飛んでるところ、見てみたいし。The test flight, the morning glory that might appear this year, obviously our motivation was rising. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But in the meantime, we got a festival or whatever, right? Oh, was it? Tell me more about it in detail. Oh, wait. Maybe wait till Katori's gone. いや、小鳥。ちょっといいかな。ん?何かを用語これ、返そうと思って。石川の高校日誌じゃないか。やっぱり私が持っているのは変でしょ。そんなことないと思うが。うん。天音ちゃんが持っておくべきものだと思う。だって、そこに出てくる大親友は天音ちゃんのことなんだから。私ね、実は昔、うん、そんな昔じゃないわ。たった1年前のことよ。学校が大嫌いで、友達もいな
わかった君と私との秘密だうん Secret between friends Tee hee Alrighty then Now what? I'm on a senpai? Yeah, I like I felt someone's presence in the dining room and peeked inside. Senpai was sitting at the table with an open notebook. What are you doing this late? When I asked her that, she looked at the clock on the wall. It was already late at night. They don't want to say the actual time. There's like, it's late. Yep, it's late. Mm, it's real late. It seems she got too focused and lost track of time. The notebook she had open was Iska-san's flight log. I think so, too. I got a drink from the fridge, poured two glasses, and put one in front of Senpai. You look really happy when you're reading this diary. She smiled, looked impressed, surprised, disgusted, and then sad. That's surely because the time you spent with Iska was so great. That was a little painful for me. For Amana Senpai, the most precious time was that time she spent with her friend Iska-san, not with me. It made me a little jealous, but I couldn't do anything about it. Also, we still have our future ahead of us. Forever, she said, remember? Color? Racist! I'm just kidding. She nodded. What do you mean? The world was monotone? Basically, he had a boring world with a boring world view. I guess she meant the world looked like a black and white movie to her. Hmm. Exactly, you didn't know how to have fun. Iska gave you fun. You weren't? She nodded quietly. Well, that's a horrible way to live your life. Huh? She called you an idiot? Senpai was telling me about these memories strangely happily and proudly. Senpai was probably regarded as a prodigy since she was very young, and everyone around her was praising her. There's no doubt nobody would label a child like that as an idiot. Oh, there's no doubt anybody would label a child like that. There's no doubt nobody? That didn't make any sense. However, Iska-san was different. She probably just said it like it was nothing. She meant it sarcastically because you're acting like... Obl like oblivious idiot. Like that kind of idiot. Very true, very wise. Clearly your old your first love was a very wise woman. That's Oh, did I? When Amana Senpai refused to be our supervisor, I told her something similar. But I was desperate back then. I didn't think too deeply about that. Yeah, dude. The whole world's a test. Everything only has one answer. A one correct answer, anyway. There you go. <laughs> She's the real genius. 
Come to think of it, Amaya Senpai did say that Iska-san was a genius numerous times. Then you'd, be some, then you'd probably be some stuck up Bize who doesn't even do anything except work and answer people's questions and correct people and nobody would like you. Again, she was talking happily. She often says that something happened because she's an idiot, but when she does that, it's always out of pride. Oh yeah? Tell me about them. This is kind of going in a weird direction. Sounds delicious. She looked like she was about to start drooling. I'm sure she was a glutton back then, too. Those were her precious memories, but looking at that story from the outside, it seemed like a delinquent teaching a bunch of bad things to a diligent student. いいことと悪いこと。役に立つものと行わないもの。物事をそんな風にしか捉えていなかった私に、I get it. Hamana Senpai was talking about her precious memories with sparkles in her eyes. When I looked at the profile of her face, Ah, it's my beloved Senpai! That's what I thought. Her eyes, that were clear and full of curiosity like those of a young child, were glittering with countless sparkles, like a sky when you look up at it from under the water. This was the Hamana Senpai I came to love and admire. Senpai certainly is a genius, there's no doubt about it. However, because of that, she was sure that everything has to be arranged in harmony. Whether something could or couldn't be done, she knew the outcome beforehand. She wasn't interested in anything and wasn't enjoying anything. That may be why the world seemed monotone to her. Meeting Iska-san became the key that made Mochizuki's Imane who she is today. So, your best friend also became your supporter, huh? <sighs> she nodded deeply. However, her eyes were soon clouded with sadness. Do we need to know more about this part of the story, this disappearance thing? Did she really die? Her eyes that were filled with hope and excitement completely changed, and her face sunk into sadness. When I saw that, I remembered something Anchan told me some time ago. After Iska disappeared, Amane changed. She wouldn't let anyone get close to her. She cut her ties with Anchan as well. I can't imagine her like that now, but when I asked her to be our club supervisor, I did get that sort of feeling. It was like she was trying to distance herself from us. And yet, you continued building the glider on your own. Senpai flipped through the diary in silence until she stopped on the last page. Her eyes fell on, I want to cross over the passage of clouds. Those were the words written there. She broke her promise, man! Probably true. Then why? Why does she keep staying in that garage? Sorry, I didn't realize she was still talking. Oh. Oh. Say. Man, you, you have a lot of pauses in your speech, Amane. Good lord. Good lord. 
It was that day when we flew last year, right? Senpai nodded. That day when she looked up at the disappearing cloud, she whispered, This is goodbye. That was probably when she decided to put her time with Iska into the past, to change it into memories. So that's why you refused to become our advisor. As she said that apologetically, I gently clasped her hand to tell her there was no need to feel that way. But then, why did you come back to it? Or why did you come back in the end? あの気持ちを I reflexively squeezed her hand that I was holding a little more firmly. We continued on, but I wondered time and time again if it was right if it was the right thing to do. To be honest, I even thought of quitting multiple times. If I wanted to fly a glider, there was other ways, and I would have found some other fun things to do if I'd looked for them. But I couldn't let go of it. Just like Amana Senpai kept holding on to her promise with Iskasan. It was too important, so I didn't want to quit. We're your junior, so we were influenced by you, and we've turned into idiots. <laughs> Senpai laughed and wiped a tear that appeared in the corner of her eye at some point with her finger. Sounds good to me. Alright. It's a dream you two left, uh, left to us. It was all a dream! As she whispered that, she traced the edge of the notebook with her finger. Perhaps she was still hesitant to face her memories of Iskasan. How do you see the world now? My question made her stare at me in puzzlement. She looked at me, looked at my face fixedly and then squeezed back my hand. Pink sparkles? Huh? The answer I got was a little different from what I had expected. Is that right? Is that so? It seemed as that if I prodded deep too if I prodded too deeply, I might have spoiled the serious conversation we just had. It's getting late. Let's go to sleep. When I stood up, Senpai kept sitting and holding my hand and looked at me regretfully. I took a quick look towards the entrance to the dining hall and then leaned over. Oh yeah. Gotta get that good night kiss in, baby. That's a good night kiss. Mm-hmm. And there's more where that came from, if and when you're ready. I said slightly embarrassed and Senpai smiled with satisfaction. Alright, let's go to sleep. She said and slouched onto the table. Wait, what are you doing, Senpai? <laughs> she just gonna conk out right there on the table. Oh, Senpai, Senpai, Senpai. Why don't you go back to your room? <laughs> There's too much shit in there. What? Oh, God. Why not? It turned out her room was completely filled with work-related materials and equipment, and there was no place to s or no space to sleep. Even so, the dining hall table is no place to sleep. <laughs> it's unexpectedly comfortable. This girl. Sleep in my bed. Yeah, I'll sleep on the floor. Are you sure? I can't let her sleep in the dining hall, but... It's late at night already, so we can't clean up her room either. I could, but... Maybe. I'm not confident I could keep my sense of reason, so I'll pass. Oh shit! 
I don't think you need to keep it though. Oh damn, this girl accidentally did saying words like that. I, I do. Tori's sleeping next door. We should keep stuff like this in moderation. <laughs> Senpai murmured in disappointment and crawled into bed. Three seconds later. Damn, conked out immediately. Well, I guess there goes the possibility of something else. What? She's asleep already. She was really good at falling asleep. And I wanted another good night kiss. Wah, wah. As Senpai was already sound asleep, I kissed her on the cheek and then I laid out a blanket on the floor and went to sleep there. Wah, wah. Oh, well. The weather has been clear since this morning. It must be... Test flight day. Oh, yeah. Anchan got out the pickup truck that he parked in front of the garage. Got out of the pickup truck. Yeah, we finished loading everything onto the trailer. Agatha connected the trailer to the back of the pickup truck. Glad it was loaded onto the trailer. Hell yeah. Choo! We finished the remodeling late last night. We ran into some unexpected trouble that caused some delays, but everyone worked hard and stayed up late to carry out the test flight on time. Starting today, we'll be going to the runway. And then, we'll be flying, baby! Let's go! Ah, they're here. Oi! Katori and the others were waiting at the runway. They had gone ahead to prepare the winch and such. Anchan parked the truck that was pulling the trailer at the side of the runway. At club president Katori's command, everyone split into groups and started assembling the glider. We unloaded the dis disassembled parts from the trailer. We finished remodeling the glider late last night. So we haven't seen it assembled yet. We haven't done this in a year. While we remembered how we did this last summer, we were teaching the new members. ただの思いつき。だからしにつばさ。ああ。けど、the white glider was standing on the runway that was covered with a green carpet made from thick summer grass. Aerodynamic body, huge forward swept wings, the newly reborn aircraft was sparkling brightly as it bathed in the midsummer sunlight. Oh yeah. The first year saw the assembled glider up close for the first time. Their eyes sparkled as they looked at this airframe with unproportionately huge wings. It was the same for the third years. They looked at the glider that they had made almost as if it was a gift from the heavens. Katori's words brought everyone to their senses. We didn't come here to assemble it and then just stare at that shit. We'll be flying that bitch! From now on, with this glider. Oh, from now on, with this glider. Sorry, I said that very like it was going to continue a new a new sentence. Roger. I got into the cockpit and started checking the flight systems. The glider was finished just yesterday, so I performed the check before the main flight very carefully. While Agatha was confirming each entry on the checklist, she was explaining its significance to Asuchan and Yoruchan. <laughs> At the end, we had Amane Senpai take a look and check the f check, and the check was finished. Then, when the flight preparations were finished, who's going with me? Oh, 
Masatsugu, Hotaru, and for some reason, Akari-san showed up at the runway. Masatsugu and Hotaru let out happy cheers when they saw the finished glide. And then you're just here, huh? Okay. Akari-san's words were uh, words made Katori grin. She said it with an expression showing that she couldn't help but boast about it. Yeah, you can watch us fly the glider that we made, okay? With our bare freaking hands, okay? Well, we all felt the same way, so Katori was pretty much speaking for all of us. Right, right. Anshan patted Hitaru and Masatsugo on the head. They both seem happy to be praised by him. Who's going with me? Here, anytime. <laughs> She's like, fuck that shit. Mm -mm -mm -mm. She declared it firmly. Her fear of heights hasn't changed a bit since last year. I was really looking forward to our date in the sky, but I guess that's not gonna happen. Yeah, that's right. I promised that last year, too. When it had been decided that I would be the pilot, Katori was feeling bitter and I promised her that once I'm able to pilot the glider on my own, I take her on the first flight. That is true. That did happen, even before we got locked into Katori Town. Uh, treat her more like she's luggage. Pretend she can't even speak. Amane Senpai watched the noisy launch preparations from a little distance away. It was almost like she was looking at a faraway land. She seemed somewhat lonely. I got out of the cockpit for a moment and walked over to her. Senpai? Um, is it painful for you after all? It was still hard for her to face her memories of Iskasan, so she tried to distance herself from the glider. But then again, the time she spent with us was also precious to her, and that's why she came back. She said she was looking forward to the test flight, but she still hasn't forgotten her feelings. Or still hasn't gotten her feelings about Iskasan in order. This is the glider you designed f for your promise with Iskasan, right? So that means when this glider flies, the memories of Iskasan will be nearby. That promise hasn't been fulfilled yet. I thought it might have been a little impudent. This was Senpai's past I knew little about. Those were her precious sad memories. And I'm just barging in and saying st stuff without consideration. But I thought it was at least a somewhat forgivable, since I am the man who took away her innocence. Because I'm her boyfriend after all. Oh, that's. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not. That's what I meant to say. I am? Ah. We are going to take this glider above that cloud. Senpai smiled, though with a f hint of loneliness. Well then, I'm off. I left her side and returned to the cockpit. Katori, you all right there? Agha, you we're good to go. The canopy closed. Finally, it's time to return to the sky over Kazagara, baby. Click, click, boom! The glider that Aoi Kun and Katori were riding was connected to the winch with a towing rope. Oh, apparently we're from Amane's uh, perspective all of a sudden. The two of them looked nervous inside the canopy, but they also seem to be having fun. Because unlike me, they're not afraid of flying. Rather, they want to fly. 
It's almost like they were they were saying they naturally belong in this guy. Agatha gave a signal towards the winch installed on the other side of the runway. And away they go! Woot! Bye bye In the next moment, the towing rope pulled the glider and it started moving. After merely a few seconds, Aoi-kun pulled the control stick and the aircraft rose into the air. I held my breath for a moment, but they still stayed at a low altitude. Without the friction against the ground, the glider steadily started accelerating. The nose turned upwards. With its huge wings spread out, the pure white aircraft soared up into the sky. If you're going to continue her dream, I want you to have it as a friend. Hitori said that when she passed me Iska's flight log. At that time, I thought that maybe I shouldn't have taken it. But what do I do now? So that means when the glider flies, the memories of Iska-san will be nearby. I remembered the words Aoi-kun said to me just now, and they revived the thoughts I had kept inside. I looked at the sky. The towing rope was slowly falling down with its small parachute open. Right now, the glider detached from the winch was soaring in the sky with the winds it caught with its own wings. Iska dreamed of it. I drew it. And then they gave it form. The sky I looked up at was vividly blue. The white wings glimmered as they reflected the sunlight. I'm still dreaming. Because the promise we made on that day is right before the place where I'm standing in right now. Okay. Coo. Coo, coo, ka -choo. Now back to up in the sky, or are we just going to skip forward ahead some more? I'd kind of be okay with it. Oh, flashback time again. Okay. What Oh, this is when she started wearing contacts. Nice. ありがとう。ゼリーだ。美味しそう。わわ。ん?お前ハットか?わあ。ついこの間までひよこだったのに。その子よく食べるからね。はあ。具合はどうだ?That's a new shot. But all right, cool. へえ、きさ。ちょっと熱があるだけだから。そうか。わざわざ来てくれなくてよかったのに。でももう<笑> が無理をさせてしまったのか。うん、違う違う。その逆だって。甘根のおかげでずっと調子良かったんだよ。そうなのか。甘根には僕は生まれつき体が弱いんだ。そんな風に見えないが。普段はね。でも、はしゃぎす
だったらせめて残したい僕がここにいた証しを<笑>残せばいい私にもできることがあれば言ってくれねえあれどうしたあれああ大学の話か断ったよえなんで別に大学に編入してまでやりたい勉強はないからなでもあんたの頭ならどこへだって行けるのに確かに全く興味がないわけじゃないが今の私には他に行きたいところがあるんだん連れて行ってくれるんだろう私をあの雲の向こうへあまねあんた私にとってはイスカとの約束の方が大事だ<笑>何を驚いてるんだあおおいやさすがあまねだわ分かってるわ安心して僕が命に変えても連れていくよあんたをあの雲の向こうへあ楽しみにしてる<笑>約束だイスカ who was always bright and full of life somehow looked a little small on that day when I saw my best friend like this I was bewildered she looked like a different person from the Iska I knew ところでイスカ私のメガネを知らないかこの間部室で居眠りしているうちに亡くなってしまったようなのだがさあ知らないよあんたすぐ物をなくすからね Sounds like a liar to me. She probably took him off your face while you were sleeping and pretended that you lost him. There's no other options. It's not like I can get a new pair of glasses. That's impossible. 